Your cellular age will almost remain stagnant for a long period of time. This is not some miracle. Every human being is capable of this with some simple attention to fundamental things. Believe me, your aging process is almost... will not progress. Right now, as you see societies get more and more affluent, they start eating worse and worse food. What a rural person in India would not touch, very sophisticated cities are eating that kind of food. When I say that kind of food, almost anything that Western societies are using today are a minimum thirty to sixty days old. In yoga, their food is classified as sattva, rajas and tamas. Tamas means inertia. If you eat anything which has tamas, inertia will come in your system. Inertia does not mean you just become lazy. Inertia means certain things slow down. Essentially, regeneration of the system slows down. If you are consuming foods which are tamasic, then you will see cognition levels slowly will go down over a period of time. Nearly sixty percent of the world's antacids are so sold in America. They can eat the best food. But no, they will eat the worst food because commercial forces will decide what you eat. Just I'm saying, if everything becomes fresh food, in the yogic culture, if you cook something, the maximum time in which you can eat it is one and a half hours, ninety minutes. Before that, you should have eaten the food. After that, we won't touch the food because it has started gathering tamas, inertia will begin to happen. If you want to experiment, you can experiment. You something, eat something very fresh for one week, eat something which is processed and kept for one month, two months and then eat it, you will see the level of alertness in the system, you will notice it in your experience. But it is happening at the cellular level, we call this ojas. If you create sufficient ojas, which is a non-physical dimension of energy, if every cell in your body is wrapped in this, believe me, your aging process is almost... will not progress. Your cellular age will almost remain stag stagnant for a long period of time. Some of the tests they have done on me and, uh, you know, <laughs> they are saying that I'm... my cellular age is twenty-five. This is not some miracle. Every human being is capable of this with some simple attention to fundamental things. And the colon health is something that is completely neglected today. If you do not keep your colon clean, keeping your mind in a balanced state is very, very difficult. So in the yoga center, the day starts with a small marble-sized ball of neem and turmeric. This whole digestive process is a region where you have maximum amount of microorganisms. Many of them have turned friendly to us, but still there are many who are harmful to us. The uniqueness of neem, especially when it is taken along with turmeric, largely those things which are not necessary for the body, those things can... that which can harm the body, all these things get eliminated. In yoga, we look at human system as five sheets or layers. Every aspect of a human system, including the mind, is seen as body. And yoga is a technology to transform it. These five layers of the body are Anamay Kosha, Manomay Kosha, Pranamay Kosha, Vijnanamay Kosha and Anandamay Kosha. Anna means food. And therefore, Anamay Kosha or the physical body is basically the food that we all have eaten. Similarly, as there is a physical body that we have gathered from outside, there is also a mental body which is present in the form of mind in each and every cell of the body as memory and intelligence. This mental body is known as Manomay Kosha, whereas the third layer is the energy body or the Pranamay Kosha. Now, if we bring the physical body, mental body and the energy body into proper alignment and balance, we will not have any physical or psychological ailments and only then there would be a possibility or a passage to touch Anandamay Kosha or the blissful body. That means the blissfulness becomes a natural state of being. And this is what we are trying to do with Mahashivaratri Sadhana 
fooding habits one of which includes having two meals a day and the first meal only after 12 pm there is a scientific evidence to it that when it comes to food one of the most important aspects that we all must be conscious of is how quickly a certain type of food digests and become a part of our cell one level of what the spiritual process means is that you bring a certain sense of integrity to your body and mind by integrity it means that when your system is not consolidated in a certain way if it is loose then it becomes incapable for experiencing anything even if the greatest thing happens one can miss it that is why sadhakas in general eat only once or twice a day and nothing in between because they do not want their body to open for anything no outside elements except of air and water should enter the system too often because it will lose in the integrity of the system in terms of sensitivity and receptivity sensation is the outermost layer of who we are if one wants to keep himself or herself very sensitive it is very important for you that you do not open the body just for anything and everything that comes in your way you must eat well but you must not be eating many times second fooding habits that one has to remember during sadhana period is that for breakfast the sadhakas has to eat 8 to 10 honey soaked peppercorns with 2 to 3 vilva or neem leaves or balls and a handful of ground nut one has to eat this only after completing the entire mahashivratri sadhana as well as shambhavi sadhana now do you know one thing that for a hatha yogi neem is particularly very important because it keeps the body slightly oriented towards ushna that is neem generates heat in the system or ushna in the body this generation of heat is supportive for generating intense amount of energy within the system I have talked about Ushna in detail in this video and I will highly recommend you to watch the video after completely watching this video. Now continuing further, a yogi always wants to keep the body slightly on the warmer side because heat also indicates intensity and dynamism. If the body cools below a certain point, it creates inertia in the system. That means shita content of the system rises. and when it rises the mucus level in the body will grow up and if the body is in a condition of sita then you will not be capable of doing too much of activity but on the other side if you are keeping your body slightly on the ushna side it will get your energies to a certain level and also take you to a higher realm of perception secondly Modern societies today have forgotten that what you generate in the stomach where all this go and to what extent is goes they have largely ignored it but this is a very important aspect if one wants to facilitate this the neem has been proven to be greatly helpful in this tremendous process because it facilitates that your transmission of energy is evenly across the entire system or the entire body not only this neem also has a great power to create another level of energy which is known as ojas if you are doing your sadhana and the transmission of energy is good and even across the body then it means that every cell has been encapsulated in ojas if you want to know about ojas in detail i have talked about it in this video link of which i have given in the description you can watch after completely watching this video now moving forward today modern societies have forgotten that clear nostrils and healthy breathing are very very important they think that somehow if the air goes inside it's okay but this is not so keeping the nasal passage clear and breathing properly is an extremely important process so if you generate excess mucus in your body or if there are people who always gets cold or blocked nose or nostrils or allergies you should always know that your body has generated shita and then while doing sadhana whichever sadhana you are doing whether it's mahashivratri sadhana or shambhavi sadhana if you have excess mucus then this does not lead you to breathe properly and it may affect your system as well as your energy of the body in the long run So in such cases neem soaked in honey is very powerful to eat. Now talking about honey for those doing yogic practices consuming honey brings balance to the blood chemistry and it makes the system more vibrant. It is specially beneficial for people who have excess mucus and asthma. 
In addition to this, honey has been known to be highly positive pranic food. It is a great sugar substitute that is also incredibly good for your overall health. Now moving forward and talking about groundnut on the other hand is a complete food just by itself and is highly pranic. If you soak the groundnut over 6 to 8 hours and then consume it, it take away certain aspects that is known as pitta. At last, you must remember that if you are in a state of pregnancy, you should not consume neem because as I already discussed that neem generates heat in the system, excess heat can kill the fetus. So, one should avoid honey during their pregnancy period or if someone wants to conceive. Now finally winding up, what makes human remarkable is the consciousness in everything whatever we do. So finally ending up the video, if you wish to donate for Maha Annadanam, please contribute as per your convenience on the link given in the description. And lastly, hope you loved the video and found it meaningful. And if yes, do not forget to give it a like, share and subscribe. And also do not forget to watch these two videos that are rightly present on your screen. At last, do your sadhana well and hope your Mahasivratri will be a great night. Up to next, stay safe, healthy, happy and Namaskaram.